All right, this is part two of my talk that was delivered to the Classics Association Victoria in March 2022. This is my Bag of Tricks interactive workshop. On the day, I had audience interaction, audience participation, which I can't recreate in a slideshow delivered after the fact, but I'll try to like describe what happened kind of thing uh, for things that relied on me being there on stage. Uh, I've ordered my bag of tricks stuff roughly from um, the version of what works well with early year levels all the way down to what works well with year 12 levels. And a lot of these came from uh, other Latin teachers. I must uh, credit all of that to the people of the Latin Facebook groups, uh, which I put a, I write the names of the Facebook groups at the end here. And a lot more strategies other than these can be found on this wonderful blog, Totally Comprehensible Latin, Totally with a D, because the person who wrote it is Keith Toda. And let's get into it. So total physical response is uh, one of the most powerful ways to introduce a language. It is so universal. So what I did on stage was... I sat down, said, Sereo, o discipuli, eke, Sereo. Then I got up and I said, Surgo. Sat down and I say, Sereo. Surgo. I get up. Sereo. I, get, I sit down. Uh, and then I asked uh, my lovely colleague, Christine, Christine, Surge. Everyone turns and watches as Christine stands up. As I said, eh, she sits down, Surge. I say suddenly again, she comes up again, and I say, Sede. And down she goes. Then I say, Oh, Christine, surge et weni hook. She gets up and starts walking towards the front of the stage. Uh, and she's taking a while, so I say, Weni hook, keleriter. <laughs> she speeds up, everyone starts giggling a bit. Uh, I've put some chairs on the stage, two chairs to be exact, and uh, I say, Oh, Sede, Christine. She sits, I go, gratias tibi ago. And she said, libenter, which was very nice of her. I said, surge, weni hook, gesturing to a spot in front of the other chair. Sere, Christine, she sat. And uh, I said, gratias tibi ago. And uh, I also said, surge et abiad selam tuam. And she went back to her chair. Then I picked on some people in the audience, uh, getting them to sit and stand as as per that, getting people to stay standing while I got other people to stand, and then getting them to sit down again in a different order. That was fun. Uh, I got. Um, I even then asked the whole audience. I'll show you what I asked. Uh, I got them to all do a bunch of stuff. Omnes. Oh, the oh omnes discipuli. First, I said. Claudite, Claudite, your devices, whatever devices they were, uh, ordinatra, <laughs> whatever you would call computers, because I don't want, everyone has computers to take notes, and I got them to put away their desks, because it was like a lecture theatreette, and then I got, yeah, omne surgite, omne sedete, surgite, vertite vos, consistite. <laughs> Where did it was? Where did it was? Was turn around. Everyone's like kind of slowly or fast spinning around. Consistite, stop. And then uh, salite. I d demonstrated myself by jumping that I wanted them to jump. And I said, gratias, vobis, sedete. And feel free to take out your devices again because I won't ask you all to do that one more time. Uh, these, some of these slides were not in the presentation that I gave. But uh, I wanted to make the point that I can use this to introduce verbs, as I showed there, but also to introduce nouns. Uh, as well as nouns, there are you can introduce adverbs, especially fast, slow. That tends to make things really spicy and fun. Uh, and I like to introduce animals with TPR because animals make great protagonists in stories. So uh, Pullus and Gallus make great protagonists in this story, the story of love, Fabula Amoris. So if you want to see more examples of me actually acting out TPR with my lovely colleague Christine, Ms. Wang, uh, then 
see my playlist in the description, Latin TPR. I have video examples of five lessons plus a sixth video, which is a story using those words. Uh, next, we have an ask a story or story co-creation. So let's see if I can do this in a live way. I need to exit this uh, PowerPoint. So let me, will it, uh, maybe it won't let me. It won't let me. But uh, I'll say what story we ended up with. We said, oh, ecce feles. I would ideally have introduced these nouns before with TPR or something, and now they're getting used in a story. But co-creating a story is a great way to make things really accessible to everyone and interesting to everyone. Oh, discipuli quid es nomen feli? And uh, our people of the day said, calliope, calliope est feles. Uh, and so I typed it in there. Mus, oh, ecce mus, mus caseo consumit. Quid es nomen muri? Asked us to name our lovely, friendly mouse here. And his name was Timaeus or something. Timaeus. Ah, Timaeus est mus. Mus est Timaeus. Calliope vult murem capere et consumere. Vult timeum consumere. Lente ad murem ambulat. O discipuli, we detnemus felem an non. So I got us to vote on whether we reckon the mouse sees the cat coming or not. And uh, our class here said the mouse saw the, saw the uh, cat. So I said, oh yeah, mus felem videt et caleriter abit. Calliope murem non capit. Non eum consumit. And then I said it again using neck because I was typing things and like getting rid of the brackets. I said, Calliope murem neck capit, neck eum consumit. Hmm. Consumit ne feles caseum? I asked if uh, the cat should, uh, feeling peckish because he didn't get that mouse, should he eat that? Uh, did, did he eat the cheese? Does he eat the cheese? And uh, everyone said, nah. <laughs> so I said, no. Uh, feles caseum non consumit. The important thing about writing simple stories like this is that you can get a lot of mileage out of very simple stories if the students are engaged in them. And what makes a simple story so easy to become engaging is having the students exert some control over the story, such as making events happen or not, naming things according to their favorite little in-jokes. Uh, everything becomes funnier when a student is like the author of the story. So, um, and I didn't mention this in the talk, but there is a list of verbs that are especially good for stories and are very high frequency verbs for the classical canon as well, which includes this list, a concentric circle list of the stuff in the center is more important than the stuff radiating outwards kind of thing. So I, I structure my, um, my vocab priorities around what makes good stories happen and what is frequent to encounter in the classical canon, plus uh, words that like are to do with animals, even though they are not high frequency words, they're not going to be found in the classical canon that much. Galus, are you going to encounter that much? Um, they make such good story leads that uh, that they're, they're they're very worth learning just to keep stories interesting throughout. And you'll learn all these uh, the the more helper words through the more concrete words. Also, I didn't mention, but there is a list of fifty nine simple story starters that have done this prep work for you, a half written story that your students can contribute meaning into. Uh, and so you don't actually have to make everything up yourself. You can save a lot of work by using these, and I'll link that in the description. All right, sustained silent reading time. This is where novellas come in. I've got a link to Magister P's list of 100 plus Latin novellas so that you can actually find those. A lot of them are on Amazon. The novellas are designed to shelter vocabulary and not grammar because 
uh, vocabulary is what plays a bigger factor than grammar in raising the difficulty of a text. When new grammar is presented in understandable context, it's relatively easy to process. Like saying new grammar with easy words where you know what it's supposed to be trying to convey, it's pretty easy to get what the grammar is supposed to mean. But an unknown word is kind of like a, uh, a mystery. <laughs> but when students know 95, 98% or more of the words on a page, they can train their reading fluency and read for pages and pages and pages and uh, actually get fast at reading Latin. This is uh, not something that you can get from a Cambridge Latin course or Oxford Latin course or even even potentially Lingua Latina per se illustrata unless you do a lot of rereading of previous chapters of Lingua Latina per se illustrata. Um, there, this graphic is from the Extensive Reading Foundation. Uh, there's the vicious cycle of the weak reader and the virtuous cycle of the good reader. So the weak reader reads slowly, doesn't enjoy reading, doesn't read much, and so doesn't understand, and that makes them read slowly. That really makes me think of students who translate slowly in class, who struggle with understanding text in class, so they, they do things slowly, they don't translate as much or they don't read as much and then they their skills aren't really up to it for the next task that they need to do. Um, how do we break this kind of cycle and get the virtuous cycle, someone who reads faster, enjoys reading, reads more, understands better and so reads faster? Um, you need to provide, we need to provide material that is appropriate for each student's learning level uh, and one way to do that could be to make a uh, an available library of Latin novellas that can address everyone's stages and make it appropriately challenging for every student. Um, so how you could implement that is without changing anything else about your teaching style, you could just spend five or ten minutes at the beginning of a lesson or at the beginning of a week with students reading Latin novellas, which would increase comprehensible input that you're being delivered without any other thought required for your Latin teaching planning. Uh, if you have a sizable library, you can provide input suitable for different levels. It's got inbuilt differentiation in there. During sustained silent reading, um, just a tip, like the teacher should be modeling the behavior by reading the book as well. The idea is it's reading for pleasure, no task attached. This is um, reading itself is the goal not completing a worksheet is the goal. Uh, so your teacher, you should be modeling behavior. Having said that though, I do have a naughty year nine class that uh, some of the students pretend to read in. So I, I keep a close eye on them while holding my book open and kind of like redirecting them back to the task if I see them wandering away from the actual task of reading. You could also assign the whole class the same novella and assign tasks with it. That would be the kind of thing where you're using novellas as the basis of a curriculum, uh, like you're replacing a textbook course book with lots of input material and maybe having some kind of stimulus response stuff with it. Um, so that that's also a totally legitimate way to use novellas in class. Now into pre-reading strategies. The aim with this is to preview vocabulary so that stories are easier to understand. Uh, and one way that I've done it is with picture vocab flashcards where there's the picture on one side with a question in Latin that is expecting an answer which contains the target word. Quid facit ille? Obviously he's shouting. Um, and then I show them the other side. Clamat. Ille clamat. I don't have to say ille. I could just say clamat. Clamat. Then I say, okay, flip back to the front. Everyone answer my question. Quid facit ille? Clamat. Clamat, yeah. Even though you weren't the one who first said that word, I want you to then say it. Once you hear the right answer, say it. Uh, what I'm wanting them to do is just listen to each other saying the Latin word aloud as a response to the question. And so building up more chances of seeing the language, um, like having a meaningful response in the language being heard by people as a meaningful reply to a question. Uh, and I do that with the next word, and then I go back to the first word. The next two words, go back to the first two words, and slowly build it up. Maybe not do 20 at once, more like 10 max, because it gets a bit tiring after a while. But I find that to be uh, a whole class activity that's quite effective at 
drawing along everyone and getting people to hear a lot of Latin in class. Uh, and it stays in Latin. It's not all about making it equivalent to an English word. It tries to stick in Latin. Another, like, that thing takes some prep time, though. It takes um, putting together some pictures and writing some sentences and doing that kind of thing. Um, here's a no-prep vocab activity, which is project four to eight target words on the board in Latin and English. Students choose four words to illustrate on big A4 sheets, fill up the entire A4 sheet students, or else uh, if you're working on OneNote and you can share things via OneNote, they're working on some kind of way of being able to share it with you then. So then, after they've illustrated four words, and hopefully there's no words that haven't been illustrated by anyone, you share the different drawings with the class. Uh, you, you say, okay, word number one, this one. Uh, I'll get all of the examples, whoop, and uh, the class votes on which one's the best example for that word. So you show each of the examples, what's the best example drawing for that word? And uh, as you're showing them to the class, you can describe the drawings in Latin, because oftentimes students will add a little bit of an elaborate feature on that thing. Uh, and you could, they might give a background to a noun. They might uh, have a verb being acted out by a particular kind of actor. And uh, an agent is, um, or like some kind of subject that you can see uh, you could describe in Latin as doing that action. Um, so you describe the Latin uh, as you show things, that's giving them more input based on the content they've generated for you. Then once you've gotten uh, like the winners for each of those four to eight target words, which you can then proudly display on the wall, pinned up on the notice board, you can use the discarded drawings for quizzing. So you pick them up and be like, hey, what's this? What's that? Uh, what's he doing? What's he like? What's she like? That kind of thing. Whatever like the target word was, you'd have a different thing. And, and you could ask that in Latin, of course, like quid est talk, uh, quid fuck it, quid argit, that kind of thing. Uh, there's also this activity, one word at a time, where you write eight to ten target words on individual index cards with Latin and an English definition. You put students into groups and you give each group a target word to start off with. They need to write a sentence with the target word on it and underlight that target word in that sentence. When they're done with a sentence, and they'll all get done at different times, which is perfect because you're roaming around seeing how they're going, and then you see a group putting up their hands, you go and check their sentence and fix up the grammar. And uh, when their grammar's been fixed up, because, uh, I mean, they're still students, they're going to get things wrong. That's fine. Um, so the teacher's fixed up the grammar, then they get a new target word. They swap with your bank of target words or, or with another group. Uh, they get a new target word and they need to continue their story with a new sentence that contains the next target word. So um, what they end up doing as you go around all the groups fixing up their grammar and giving them the next target word is you, you get a lot of stories that target the same group of words but they have these meandering kind of crazy plot lines that still somehow make sense. And uh, so in the next lesson, like at the end of the lesson, you gather all the stories that were generated. And at the next lesson, you present all the stories that were generated this way. And lo and behold, each target word gets multiple reinforcements. Also, students are very interested in reading the crazy stories that their classmates have written. So it's a, it's a win all around. And it doesn't take very much prep or energy to execute. That was from Keith Toder's blog, by the way. Alternatives to written translation. I said before that translation is a very slow and inefficient way to handle a passage. So how do we make sure that, like, how do we ensure that every student is understanding every word in a story and not just gla glazing past it? Like, um, I just read it to you and then I hope that you understand it. Uh, here's one way, which is choral translation. And I usually, um, this is the way I execute it. I will first say the whole paragraph aloud in Latin, give yourselves the chance to try to get it at the speed of like speech, but uh, don't worry too much if you can't, students, but your job is to watch, keep, keep your eyes on where I'm up to in the sentence, and don't talk over me. Quintus domum cocurrit territus, et omnia patri narrawit, blah blah blah, all the way to the end of the paragraph. Now I go, all right, everyone, translate it with me aloud, and I'll point to it in English word order. Okay, Quintus. 
ran home, terrified, and told everything to his father. And so I want to hear it from all of you if the class is starting to like peter out with only two people responding then i say okay now everyone let's do that sentence one more time but i want to hear all of you and then we do it so that everyone has said aloud the meaning of each of those words and all the way through to the end of the paragraph so everyone has heard what the story is now i read it aloud one more time in latin and i say Students, I want you to picture in your minds what is happening in this scene. Now I'll read it aloud. Quintus domum cucurrit derritus, et omnia patri narravit. The point of that is to get things back into the Latin word order, to try to get students the chance to fill it back into the way Latin actually presents the things. So that is quite a good way to get through an initial reading of a text without translating it into a written translation. And it keeps the whole class together as well, which is great. Other alternatives are to show slides with the sentence and an illustration for every sentence in the story. So for example, here's from the uh, Oxford Latin course. Dum Trojani a Sicilia, a Sicilia ad Italiam navigant, when it magna tempestas, oh discipuli, eke tempestas est, est magna tempestas. And I'll be like maybe gesturing something that shows it like magna, big. Um, I could ask questions in Latin like, uh, oh, Trojani a Sicilia navigant? Trojani ad Siciliam navigant? Uh, non, non, a Sicilia navigant, Trojani. Uh, and just going through like that, you could, if you feel confident about students' ability to understand things in Latin at that point, um, for some classes that are very weak, I will actually do have the um, have the picture and do the choral thing where I go while the Trojans sail from Sicily uh, and just do it that way as well, just to be extremely uh, pedantic with them. Uh, but it gives you so many opportunities to kind of. Uh, riff off the pictures as well. Oh, ecce Aeolus Rex Ventorum. Oh, Rex, Rex Coronam Habet. Oh, can I show it? Coronam Habet. Wenti, uh, Wenti Lighty Sunt. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so basically going through that and kind of riffing off what's uh, what's in the illustration while describing it in Latin is really good. Uh, so that, that gives you lots of rich opportunities to increase comprehensible input and to make stories that exist in the, in the textbook curriculum more comprehensible. Uh, then there's also uh, setting a reading comprehension where the students read the text in Latin, read questions in Latin and answer multiple choice questions in Latin, which is quite easy to sort of monitor and uh, and see how well they're doing and they get instant feedback or very soon feedback from multiple choice question quizzes if you do it digitally. So um, this could be like like this example here, Magister, blah, blah, blah. And I've got uh, some options given here. You could deliver this orally as well, or you could have it be something that they read and then they click on their devices what the answers are in Latin. Um, reading in Latin the and like questions and multiple choice in Latin has the downside of students could just read the the words and not know what they mean. So like um, a student could just know that he gives something to the magister or whatever that is but doesn't know what the magister is so they click on magistro uh, but they don't really understand that that means captain kind of thing. Uh, so that doesn't make a good um, assessment, but it makes a good activity because they are getting a lot of input in Latin. So it really depends on what your uh, goal is with the activity. <laughs> What done? What done? Revocar, 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 rev